Hey, welcome everybody to my studio. My name's Chris, and in this video today, I'm going to talk about how I lay out my palette, my watercolor palette. Let's talk first about the actual palette here. Um, you can see that uh, it is a uh, got 24 wells around the outside, and an additional eight wells uh, outside of that. This is a uh, porcelain palette. It's called the Stephen Quiller porcelain palette. It's available uh, on Amazon and other places. I will put a link down below, below this video in the description so you can uh, look into purchasing one yourself. I absolutely love this palette. It is very heavy. Uh, it's for studio use only, and uh, but it's just got a beautiful surface for mixing your paint on, and I love it. Nice big area in the center for mixing paints. Alrighty, so um, let's take uh, a look at the uh, colors that I have on here. I actually have a variety of brands of color. I have actually four different brands. I have Daniel Smith colors, M. Graham, Magello Mission Gold, and Windsor Newton. So I have over time just collected different paints. The Windsor Newtons were just some that I inherited from my mom and kept and have put on the palette, just a few of those. Uh, the Magello Mission Gold was one of the first uh, brands of paints I ever purchased and I'm almost running out of most of those colors but it was a very affordable set especially for a beginning set that's Magello Mission Gold and then since then I've started purchasing either M. Graham or Daniel Smith colors and I am basically trying to develop my own palette made up of my own or made up of various brands whichever brand I find has the best color that I'm looking for. Just because, let's face it, in, uh, not every brand has the best, let's say the best yellow ochre or the best burnt sienna or the best ultramarine blue. And so I am using different brands and trying to, to just kind of decide which brands I really like in which color space. And so you're going to see that on my palette here. Okay. I'm going to go around and name all 24 colors, actually there's 32 colors uh, here, and um, give you the brand of each one, and then I'm going to swatch all this out. Um, by the way, you can see I actually have a color wheel painted here, and this is an old one. And the reason I'm going to be painting a new one here in a few minutes, I'm going to swatch these colors, is because, again, as I'm going through time using these colors. I'm adding new colors. They no longer fit in the wheel because I my wheel's full. And then I run out of a certain color. For example, some of the Windsor Newton or Magello Mission Gold colors. I no longer have that. I ran out of the, the paint in those tubes and I didn't purchase a new one of that color. And so I crossed it out and I'm kind of rebuilding my color palette, my color wheel. And so that's what this lesson's all about. I'm in the process of doing that. So again, I'm just going to go around and um, identify these different colors. Uh, having uh, The way the color wheel is laid out, and this is typical, yellow at the top, uh, your three primary colors here, a yellow here, a red down in this area, and a blue here. This Quiller, Stephen Quiller palette is really nice because it marks with a special shaped well the three primary colors here. So starting with Azo Yellow, this is a Mission Gold color. Then I have a Permanent Yellow Deep. This is a Magello Mission Gold, uh, then a New Gamboge, Daniel Smith, then I have a Yellow Orange, another Magello Mission Gold color, then Azo, Azo Orange by M. Graham. Here I have a Yellow Ochre by Daniel Smith. Not too crazy about this color. I have another Yellow Ochre up here, uh, and this is the uh, Magello Mission Gold, and I really liked their yellow ochre more than the Daniel Smith, which is funny because Daniel Smith is more expensive. I have up here, um, actually I'm going to just keep going around um, the inner circle first, the 24 colors. Uh, next I have Opera, this is a Magello Mission Gold. This is considered uh, not a very permanent color, um, but it's a very bright pink. Then I have Pyrrole Red Mission Gold, Quinacridone Magenta, this is Windsor Newton, Quinacridone, Quinacridone, I can't say that right, Quinacridone, Rose, this is a Daniel Smith, then I have Permanent Alizarin Crimson, an M. Graham color, and next this is Moon Glow, this is kind of a specialty color, uh, this is by Daniel Smith, it's kind of a purpley gray, 
My next color here, uh, secondary color down at the bottom of the wheel, is a purple. It is dioxazine purple by M. Graham. Next I get into my blues. This is a cerulean blue, chromium, by Daniel Smith. Next I have ultramarine blue, M. Graham. Next a cobalt blue by Mag uh, Magello Mission Gold. Thalo blue, green shade, by Daniel Smith. Next a Windsor blue, red shade, by Windsor Newton. A peacock blue, which is by Magello Mission Gold. And uh, next to that, I have a thalo turquoise by Daniel Smith. Up here, a thalo green by M. Graham. Next, uh, kind of a more specialty color, a green gold by Daniel Smith. Sap green by M. Graham. And the last one here uh, on the inner circle is thalo yellow green by Daniel Smith. Now going around the outside, again, the outer wells here, there are eight of them. And these are typically for uh, either some neutral colors uh, or some of the browns. And uh, I've laid them out as follows. Up here I have nickel quinacridone gold, an M. Graham color. I really love this color. It's beautiful. Yellow ochre, which I already mentioned earlier by Mission Gold. Down here I have quinacridone burnt orange, which is a Daniel Smith color. Burnt sienna by Magello Mission Gold. Over here, one of my favorite colors, Indigo by Daniel Smith. It's a bluish gray. Sepia by Windsor Newton. It's more of a brown gray. Up in here, I have Burnt Umber, Magello Mission Gold. And lastly, up here in the upper right, I have Red Brown by Magello Mission Gold. So those are all 32 colors okay, that I have in this particular palette. And again, uh, usually yellow at the top, going around through your oranges, your reds, um, through the blues, greens, and back up here. And that's typically the way you'll set up a palette, quite, quite typically. And again, the outer wells are for our neutrals, browns, and things like that. Others, maybe other special colors. So all of these colors in here, the ones I've just mentioned, I will put the name of each color and the brand name in the description down below this video. So you can take a look there if you're interested in purchasing any of these colors. What we're going to do next is uh, I want to actually swatch all of these colors. And so to do that, I went ahead and took some of my Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and uh, drew out my uh, co color wheel with the 24 spaces and went ahead and labeled them all all the way around, including the eight other swatches uh, around the outside. And I'm just going to go ahead through now the remainder of this video and I'm going to swatch these. Uh, by the way, the way I did this, I was able to draw this with the 24 equal spaces. I just uh, have a little template that I used to trace that on there and I'm going to have this as a PDF file or, or as a JPEG or something that will be available also in the description below the video. So if you want to print this on your printer and then trace it uh, onto your watercolor paper as I've done here, then you could go ahead and swatch your 24 colors plus your other neutrals uh, and have it look like this. I find it's really helpful because especially as you're a beginning painter, you really need to learn the names, you need to learn the different qualities of these colors, and many of the colors are very similar. There's lots of different blues, lots of different oranges and all, lots of different reds, and I'm, I'm still in the process really of learning these names and learning the differences between them. And um, I'll have to admit that my colors are not always um, in the correct order necessarily, because as you move from yellow, you're going to, you know, obviously go uh, from a yellow into a more orange, and so your redder oranges should be on the, you know, towards the reds, and your yellower oranges should be more towards the yellow. And mine aren't always. Uh, properly probably laid out in exactly the right order. Again, this is a working color wheel for me, something that I uh, am constantly changing and moving colors around as I decide which brand, which color that I really prefer. All right, enough explanation. I'm going to go ahead in and uh, start swatching these. I'm going to start right at the top uh, there with my Azo yellow. And in each case, I'm going to try to lay down initially a dark uh, value of that or dark tone, a really opaque tone, and then um, just go ahead and pull once I get that down I'm going to 
use with water on the brush and just kind of pull down here and try to get a little lighter tone. I want to see what the color looks like from a really dark tone or a more opaque um, and then down into a more watered down version. Okay, that's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to move over next. We have permanent yellow deep, mission gold. See a nice orange. It's a pretty opaque color in, um, I should say, a non or semi transparent. I shouldn't really say opaque. It's all water color, so it's going to be pretty. Um, pretty transparent to different different degrees of transparency. So you have real true transparent colors and then semi-transparent and, um, and and with gradations in between uh, according to the, the different manufacturer and you have to look at that as you're purchasing this, the different colors. The next color is a new gamboge by Daniel Smith. I really like this color a lot. And I'm also trying here carefully as I do this to not um, touch these colors. Um, because I want to, I don't want them to bleed into each other. So I'll leave a little bit of white in between each color band. Next is yellow orange, mission gold. And you see, the further we move towards the reds, um, these colors get, uh, this is getting a little bit more of a, of a reddish orange. Again, that was yellow-orange. That's a Magello Mission Gold color. I'm trying to really wash my brush off well, and uh, so I don't want to mix colors. Uh, next is Azo-orange. This is an M. Graham color. I find this to be not very transparent more opaque. I tend to really like colors, pigments that are very transparent. I just prefer that because of the way I paint. And so that can vary. Different people like um, you know, different levels of transparency in their paint. So you really have to look at that um, as you're purchasing your paint and deciding which brand you like and all. You have to look at the transparency rating as well as the light fastness and uh, there's a number of things like that. Now this is the Daniel Smith yellow ochre and I had mentioned earlier I really don't like this color very much. Sorry Daniel Smith I like a lot of your pigments but this one I just don't like it. It's very weak. Um, I don't know it doesn't have a richness to it at all. You can see that as I'm putting that on there. It's, just, it's very hard to get it to be very dark and um, yeah, you can see right where I swatched it once before on my other one and here, and it just really doesn't really look very good. I don't really like it very much. So it's on my palette still because I bought it. I think it came as part of a Daniel Smith. Uh, I can't remember uh, if it came as part of a set I got or what, but um, anyways, I have it on there, and I, pro I will not purchase it again. All right, the next color I have here is Opera. This is a... Uh, they call it a fugitive color and what that means fugitive uh, is that it does not have very good light fastness rating and so uh, if you were to paint with it and hang it on the wall uh, put the original painting on the wall uh, you could come back I guess in I don't know 50 years and um, the, the color could be very faded um, not very light fast and you know Again, it takes a lot of time for that to happen, so some people just don't worry about it, but other people, a lot of professional painters, don't use opera because they're worried about the light fastness. They don't want to paint uh, professionally and then have their paints not stand the test of time. Next, we're going to Pyro Red. It's a very, um, very deep color, red, and again, um, I don't find it to be super transparent. Um, and again, I like more transparent colors, but there's times when you need a real true red. I would call that a true red, fire engine red, uh, um, that kind of thing. And it's very, it is a pretty color. Next I have 
quinacridone magenta. Uh, this is a Windsor Newton color. Now, if you look at where I'm placing this in the color wheel, this would be considered the primary color position on my wheel. So um, if I count over, there's eight. Uh, I go over from the yellow, there's eight spots over till I get to here. That's one third of the way around my wheel. And so this would be considered the red. Now, I would not necessarily call this probably your primary red. It really depends. You, you can choose to your primaries um, uh, however you want, really. Um, but and I, and I have another video about that if you're interested in knowing what I'm talking about. But anyways, the uh, quinacridone magenta there is more of a, well, of a magenta, uh, of, of a purpley uh, red, um, pinky red. So that just happens to be in that position. That's a Windsor Newton color. And again, like I said, I'm kind of constantly changing the uh, colors of my wheel. So that one just kind of got stuck there. This next one would be considered probably this quinacridone rose by Daniel Smith. Now this might be considered a better choice for um, like a primary red. So um, again you have to decide as you're setting up your palette what color do you want to have be your primary yellow, your primary red, and your primary blue and you would place those in these primary positions, the top over here and over here um, in, in the palette, and um, those would be your primaries. So that's quin quinacridone rose, very beautiful color. Next I'm going over to permanent alizarin crimson, another color I really uh, use quite a bit. Let's see here. I'm getting confused where I'm at on my wheel here. Okay. This is my last red color. Um, permanent alizarin crimson. This is an M. Graham color. Now I've kind of got my wheel turned upside down. I'm working and pulling the colors up, which I have my board at a slight angle, so that's I'm working against gravity here, but that's okay. And uh, Moon Glow is my next color. I love the Elizabeth Crimson, though. Um, by the way, uh, M. Graham, that's a, that is a beautiful color. And that could also be a really good choice for a primary red. And it's actually one of the reds I use the most. The next color on my wheel is Moon Glow. This is a specialty color. It's, um, you know, it would be one that you could more than likely put around the outside of your palette as opposed to in, in your inner circle of colors. But this is just where it happens to be on my palette. And this is, it's a very granular color. It, um, uh, so it has a lot of green in it, um, which some people really love that, some people really don't. And uh, I think it's a beautiful color when it dries. There's actually bits of um, almost kind of a purpley color and, and then a, uh, a grayish color together. It's really quite beautiful. That's Moon Glow. You'll hear a lot of people talk about that one. They, I love that one. The next color, Dioxazine Purple. So this is a rich purple. This would be one of the secondary colors. We know our secondary colors, right, are the colors you get when you mix your primaries. So this would be if you mix your um, mixed uh, your red and blue, so it comes here on the wheel in between the red and the blue. That's a, a nice purple color, Dachshund Design Purple by M. Graham. Uh, the next one is uh, a Cerulean Blue, and um, this uh, is, I just purchased this recently because I wanted a lighter blue, something a little different that might work well for skies. Um, because a lot of the blues that I have on my palette are pretty dark and some of them have kind of a greenish tone to them and of course I don't want green in my skies so I was looking for something different so I found this on the Daniel Smith um, collection of colors and I uh, went ahead and, and purchased that and I think I haven't used it a lot actually it's a fairly new color so um, jury is still out on cerulean blue. It's cerulean blue chromium by Daniel Smith. Uh, so it's a chromium base to it, I guess. This is ultramarine blue by M. Graham. Um, probably one of, you know, the most common and popular um, 
colors on the wheels is an ultramarine blue, very common. Every brand of watercolor paint has an, probably an ultramarine blue, and um, so it's a it's, it's a beautiful color. Quite often used as the primary blue, and again, mine's not in the primary blue spot on my wheel, just because of how I've laid this out over time. But that could be a good choice for your primary. Next is a cobalt blue. This is a color I have left over uh, from my Mission Gold Magello, Magello Mission Gold set. Again, that was the first set I ever purchased when I was just getting started with watercolor. I think it's very similar um, to the Ultramarine Blue. It's a little bit, I think a little bit more um, Wow, I want to say a little bit more red shade than the ultramarine blue, so it probably should be on the other side of the ultramarine, um, closer to the reds. But it's um, it's a nice color, I, and I uh, love that. Next on there is thalo blue, green shade. So Daniel Smith has a number of thalo blues, one green shade and one red shade. So it kind of shows you which direction in the wheel it's going. Now I have this in the spot uh, of my primary blue. Okay, so this is uh, and um, I just really like this color a lot. Um, it's a very dark blue, but then when you um, when you pull out and you get this little bit more water in here and pull this out, you can see it just it's a beautiful, beautiful shade of almost like a turquoise blue. Um, it's really nice. Alrighty, next, uh, and that was by Daniel Smith. That was Thalo Blue Green Shade by Daniel Smith. Next is Windsor Blue, so one of the Windsor Newton colors, again, that I had kind of left over, inherited from my mom. Um, she had a set, and I got that, and um, of colors, so I don't really have many of these Windsor Newton colors. Uh, it's just a few lying around, but I decided to put it in here. It's Windsor Blue Red Shade um, by, uh, again, Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton has been making watercolor pigments for a very long time, and uh, so it's a little bit more on the red end of the spectrum. Uh, my next is Peacock Blue, and um, it's, it's kind of an unusual um, I found that the this is a Magello Mission Gold color. One thing I found, and this was a little confusing because I was brand new to watercolor when I first got that Mission Gold set, and they don't necessarily use standard names for their colors. Like Peacock Blue is not a necessarily a real standard color name, and so I, I think it's probably similar to the Thalo Blue um, here. It's got a little more green in it though. Um, and uh, but it's a beautiful color, and it was in that set that I first got. Thalo turquoise, Daniel Smith, is my next color, and uh, so we, you know, we're moving more towards the greens now. Um, the other secondary colors. This is not my. Oops, I'm kind of going the wrong way there. I want to start with my darker color on the outside of the wheel here. A lot of times I'll turn the wheel um, and work. The color's always on the top, but I didn't really do that this time. So that's okay though. I'm going to lift some of this so you can see uh, a dark version of the color here. Um, yeah, this is again Thalo Turquoise. Beautiful color. Starting to get towards the greens. trying to show you a nice gradation of the colors from dark to um, a very washed out version of it. Next we have Thalo Green. This is by M. Graham. So now we're getting, uh, this is in the place of my, uh, my secondary color uh, between blue and yellow. So, um, and um, 
It's a really beautiful color. Next is a kind of a specialty color that I got, a green. Greens are are funny colors. Um, and um, I, I wanted a variety of different greens on my palette. I found that most before most of the colors I had, like I had hooker's green and sap green, and they, they were really quite similar to me. Uh, and I wanted something that was a little different. So when I'm doing foliage and um, in flowers and landscapes, I have a green that has a bit more of a of a yellow tint to it. And so this is called Green Gold by Daniel Smith, and I really like it a lot. I think it's beautiful and it's a nice uh, color that mixes in with other colors. Next is my sap green. This is an M. Graham color. I find it, and I find this with a lot of the M. Graham colors, pretty opaque. And so here's the deal. I was encouraged by some of the people I watch, uh, some, some teachers that I've had, um, really encouraged me to use the M. Graham colors and they're made locally here in the Pacific Northwest so I thought yeah let's try it but one thing they, they, they use honey actually as the binder in the colors which is quite unusual um, and I just find and I don't know if it's because of the honey or for whatever reason I find a lot of their colors are very much more opaque than I like and I really like I already said transparency and so I'm kind of starting to lean more towards Daniel Smith as the, as the brand that I go to for my um, colors. Uh, I haven't completely gone all over to Daniel Smith. I have, like I said, I'm, I'm really just trying to find my favorite color in whatever brand out there and just use that um, and not be so worried about brand. Um, so there may be some M. Grams that I prefer over other brands and so I'll just get, get them. Again, they, they you buy them as individual tubes so you can mix and match your brands and all of that and um, I'm not being paid by any one of these manufacturers um, or anything like that to represent their work so I'm just free to use whatever I like. My last color I just put down was Thalo Yellow Green by Daniel Smith. So th those are the um, 24 colors of my uh, color wheel and again I find it's essential that I have a color wheel um, that really represents accurately the way I've laid out my palette so that as I'm working on a painting I can really see okay what color do I want right now and I can see what that color will look like uh, all the way from a very uh, heavy um, application of the pigment down to a very transparent washed out and I find it's very important that I have that uh, available to me as I'm painting now I've got eight more colors quickly I want to go red uh, and do those up here upper left uh, corner is uh, quinacro sorry nickel quinacridone gold by M Graham I love this color it is actually a kind of yellowish uh, color uh, it's, it's called gold I guess it's it's just a beautiful color I I prefer this over say the yellow ochre that I've seen in a lot of different um, sets and so uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get a little bit darker uh, version of that here and then pull it out so you can see what that looks like from a uh, very uh, intense color and then out to a more washed out color there. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love it. A lot of times you use that when it's really transparent like that, it really looks almost yellow. And um, so I, I love that color. The next down here is my yellow ochre. This is off that uh, original Mission Gold, Magello Mission Gold um, set that I got. Again, one of the first sets of paints I ever used and um, still have some of this. I guess I'm not a super big fan of yellow ochre. I don't know. Um, but I, of all the yellow ochres I've used, I like this Magello Mission Gold <laughs> yellow ochre the best. I, I don't like the Daniel Smith, as I've already said three times. Okay, uh, next down here is uh, a color I love. It's um, Quidacridone Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith. This would be very similar to a uh, Burnt Sienna on many palettes. Um, but, oh, I just love this Daniel Smith color. Just love it. It's got a real, well, reddish, orangey cast to it um, that I don't see in a lot of other burnt siennas. 
and I think that's just gorgeous. The next one is Burnt Sienna by Magello Mission Gold and um, you can kind of get a contrast between that burnt orange I just laid down and this Burnt Sienna um, by again Magello Mission Gold and I don't know I just not real thrilled with the way that Burnt Sienna really flows it doesn't seem to have the same pigment qualities to it or maybe I can't get a real dark um, version of it and I just it's a little more brownie than the burnt orange but the quinacridone burnt orange by Daniel Smith so I really like this this Daniel Smith more so and it's very similar to a burnt sienna going around here to the lower right now is my um, Indigo, I said it earlier, this is a, a, one, a favorite color of mine. Um, you can, when you put it down like I just did there, it's, it looks black. Um, but it is a very much a blue-ish, a bluish gray. And um, I just love it. I'm gonna pull that out like that. Again, kind of going from a real intense uh, opaque kind of application and then pulling that out to more transparent you can see the color gradations there it's beautiful the next color is Windsor Newton sepia I don't tend to use this color very much but again this is one of the colors I inherited from my mom and so I have it on my palette it's much more of a brown neutral tone I think some people you already use sepia a lot and I should probably experiment with it and mixing it into other colors maybe and just really seeing what I I come up with um, but I haven't done that a lot and um, yeah but it um, it's a beautiful color more of a brown going up to the upper right now we're almost done this is burnt umber burnt umber is a really common color on most palettes um, I think it's um, you know it's, it's kind of got the reddy tones uh, like the burnt sienna down below but it's it's a little bit more of a brown and again uh, that's a beautiful color burnt umber that is a Magello Mission Gold color and last but not least my red brown also uh, by Magello Mission Gold very reddish um, tone almost got a purpley uh, red tone to the color there whoops there you go something like that okay so there you go that's my entire palette and I hope that this is helpful it's helpful to see the kind of palette that I use the way I lay out the colors uh, the way that I mix and match different brands uh, some of my kind of feelings about the different brands and um, and really just you, giving you the opportunity to see how I create a color wheel that represents my palette and how I always keep that up to date so that I always know what colors and what spots on my palette and I always try to swatch them out from a very intense uh, almost opaque version of the color to a really transparent. Thank you for watching. If this is helpful to you, go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell and that will let you know every time I add a new video to my channel, you'll be notified. So I hope this was helpful. Hope you have a great day. See you soon.